Sir, do you feel that uh, it is more livable now when it comes to you know more green spaces, uh, less pollution because of less congestion and traffic? Um, in terms of and in terms of safety and pandemic, are, are you feeling that these uh, things at least uh, have positively changed? Uh, well, I'm speaking for the city of Manila. Um, definitely, there are some marked infrastructure improvements. In I mean, basic stuff that should have been in place even before the pandemic and even i mean even before we had a new mayor like lighting um you know um signages you know these were not really taken care of in, in past administration so um definitely now there is there is an improvement in terms of these things but that being said i mean these are very basic things and that should have been in place long time ago you now so i mean to make manila more competitive we, we need to concentrate more on other things uh, because what I mentioned, you know, the, these are supposed to be there. Um, so um, the city government, uh, for sure, could, could do more than what it is doing right now. But, you know, as we say, it's, it's one step at a time. It's better than it was um, in the past administration. Ivan, I'm very curious to know, uh, condominium, condominium rents are down 32% during the pandemic. That's uh, according to Leachu Property Consultants from the first quarter of 2020 until the second quarter of this year, which means that pre-pandemic, uh, you know, Manilenios were benefiting from quite high uh, rentals. And of course, this is due not just to the heritage, but also to the new industrial developments. You've got casinos, you've got entertainment complexes, you've got big malls uh, over in Pasay. Are, are the Manilenios happy with the way that these uh, industrial developments have taken place? Uh, because, of course, it benefits uh, them financially, or has there been a lot of pushback on, on these developments? Um, I, I won't generalize with, you know, I mean, what the, the city would, would feel, no? but there are um, different ways of, uh, I mean, different sides to, you know, to, 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 to this question. Some, some people, they are, they, I mean, they don't really care about the, these new developments for them as long as they have, they earn from their real estate properties, that, that's okay, you know. But on the other spectrum of the coin, there are concerned citizens who, uh, you know, who question some of the of these projects. Like, for example, the reclamation project being proposed. I mean, is it really going to be beneficial for the city itself? Because there are environmental, there are cultural factors that are not thoroughly discussed on what will happen when you have this type of big ticket, um, big ticket developments, which will directly impact the old city and its and its. You know, it's 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 um, it's uh, it's it's sense of place, and you know, it's it's development, it's infrastructure. No, I mean these things are 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 very contentious. Ivan, do you feel that enough protection was given to the heritage sites? No, not enough. Okay, um, and how would you suggest that that this improves? Uh, well. Because, you know, I mean, protection is one thing. Rest restoring a, a building is one thing. But to make it more viable, we need to also improve on the neighborhoods, no? I mean, where these resources, where these old buildings are, to make them more viable economically in terms of um, real estate and um, um, competition with other cities, no? But this part, we haven't really, I mean, the city hasn't really tackled enough yet. Uh, so there's, there's, I mean, there's really a lot of things that needs to be done. I mean, it's not as simple as restoring a building. Okay, mm -hmm. I, we need um, improvements in the in the policy in policy uh, making. We need improvements down to the barangay level uh, on how to make you know um, these areas uh, better and more competitive with the with the other modern parts of our of, of NCR. Okay. And finally, sir, before we let you go, can you comment on the construction of the Binondo and Tramuros Bridge? Some are saying that this may lead to the delisting of the Baroque churches from the UNESCO World Heritage List. Uh, to what, which side are you on here? Uh, again, that's another very contentious issue because if you've seen the bridge, it's, it's one big hawking, hawking presence in the Pasig River. No? Uh, yeah, it, I mean, it, it does affect the, the listing of the San Agustin Church because it it actually um, is very near the buffer zone that is supposed to be the protection of this World Heritage property. Uh, and apart from that, um, there are issues with uh, 
the way it was built because it was built over in a canal in Binondo. Uh, personally, I would have um, done without it and could have done a, a smaller bridge, perhaps a more uh, a bridge more 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 fitting for the area for for the scale of the area and as well as more for the community. Instead of encouraging cars, why don't we encourage walking? Because these places, Binondo and Tramuros, you know, they were built hundreds of years ago and they were not designed for cars. So putting another bridge for cars, not for people, um, is something that I would rather not have in our community.